All right, here we go. <clears throat> Above this line is the fictional world. It's the fictional world. Below it is the living, breathing, flesh and blood world. <clears throat> I want you to realize that there are mirror images throughout. Mother is mom. This is the fictional realm. Mother is mom. Partner is wife. Parent is woman. Idea is being. Character is child. Title is name. And property is land. And, and land. They're not mirror images here. Here we go. <clears throat> the story I said up front. Mom goes into a hospital. Here's exactly what's happening. Two entities are created when mom goes into this foundling hospital. Mom is part, is, is, her, her partner is dad. Let me, you know what, let's just, I'll make this easy. I'm going to do just the fictional realm first. Is that alright? Okay, let's do that. Here's the way it works. This is the fictional realm. Mother, by the way, Black's Law applies to everything up here. Everything down here is what we believe, this is the world we live in. This is our physical bodies. Up here is the fictional realm. What about intercourse? Not, uh, no, I'll get to that. Okay. So this is the fictional realm. Mother is a legal term through Black's Law. Mother and father, another fictional characterization. They're both persons. They're persons. Legal persons. <clears throat> Mother and father... Is, am I okay over here? Mother and father go through a civil or legal marriage. They become partners. They become partners, <clears throat> business partners, actually. <clears throat> they and, and when they, everybody loves this, and, and you know, I hope nobody smiles at this other than me. When the two partners have intercourse, that's in Black's Law, it's considered business. Intercourse with partners in the fictional realm is business. <clears throat> These partners then become parents. How? Because these parents conceive of an idea through what's called information. Let me back up a little bit on information. When mom goes into the hospital, you know what, I, I have this stuff. Mom goes into the hospital, you know what, pause this. Just pause it real quick. Let me do something. Sorry about that, I had to run downstairs and uh, pick up the actual documentation. A buddy of mine about a little over a year ago had a, a baby girl in one of these hospitals, but, and he refused to get a birth certificate, which is great. But here's, the, here's <clears throat> when the parents are in the hospital, in fact, I should just say, the information, let's go there. The information, what does that mean? Parents conceive of an idea through information. They're in the hospital. <clears throat> The hospital hands them paperwork to fill out. This is the actual paperwork at a hospital in Illinois. The paperwork says certificate of live birth. <clears throat> now it's funny because the very first term, legal term at the top of this paperwork says informant. What they're doing is, this is information for statistical purposes only. Information. If you understand anything about information, information is what is required in their legal system. If you haven't looked up already the history of the Illinois Attorney General, you have to look up that website. If, 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 if you understand that they, re, they require information, can I have that real quick? Thank you. Information is everything in their system. So here, let me finish up this idea first. The parents conceive, conception, conceive of an idea through information. This is information. It even says it's information. But what is, what is this information? <clears throat> it's the child's information, the mother's information, information for administrative purposes, the father's information, the certifier's information, um, the residents, all the stuff imaginable that they need to create what? This is what this information is called later on. This information in their world creates what they call uh, a composition. It's like a new, a, a new little book, a story, but it's a composition that creates a new character. The character has all kinds of attributes. 
The character is the subject matter of the composition. The name of the composition is its title. The title is the name of the new character. That new character is also the subject matter, again, of this information. So the new subject matter title is handed to what? A hospital administrator. The hospital administrator takes this composition and does what? The character that's created in this, again, remember, we, mom, hands this to the administrator at the hospital. The administrator also, remember, there's a registrar involved. But the administrator does something really crazy with this information. Well, you'll see how this works out now. So the parents conceive of an idea through information. What is the idea? It's a new character. Who is the character? What is the character? It's the subject matter of this composition, this information. What is the subject matter of this composition? It is the title. What is the title? It's the name of the new character. Who is the character? Well, in your case, it was you. In my case, the new character that was created through this composition, this information, was Curtis R. Kallenbach. Curtis R. Kallenbach became the title to this subject matter piece of information. I'm, the Curtis R. Kallenbach is a new character that was created, which obviously is a new person created in their system. Now the title then goes on to become a birth certificate. It goes on to become a birth certificate. So the information provided by the what? Well, let's just look at it. The parent through conception creates an idea through the information. A new character is created. How do they get this information? How is this given to the hospital administrator? By the hand of mom, of mother. Mother, sorry. The hand of mother gives that information to the hospital administrator. So, the parents conceive of a new idea through the information provided, or the, the paperwork provided by the hospital, and then the mom delivers this information by her hand. Now, we already spoke about the hand. What is the hand? It's part of the will. So, by the will of the mother is the delivery of a new character. Mom, mother hands this information to the administrator. The administrator accepts it. So it's delivered to the administrator. A new character is created. And here's what's funny. <clears throat> a new title. The title is the name of the new character. That title is then what? It is announced. Another legal term. It is announced into the public realm. The public realm. The fictional realm. How? Well, for those of us that have had kids, what happens? What does the administrator do? She calls the newspaper and has the name published, put into the public by an announcement. <coughs> it's a birth announcement. What are they, what's, the, what's being birthed? A new issue. What is the issue? Ultimately, it's a birth certificate, but what, what, what is it? So they announce the name, Curtis R. Kallenbach, into the public. And 90 days later, according to Gilbert's law summaries on, 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 on contracts, 90 days passes, but when we have our name, when, when a child, is, when his or her name is published into the newspaper, aren't we thrilled? My God, there's bouncing baby boy, bouncing baby girl. You know, look at, look at, my, my child's name is in, the pipe, is in the paper. What are they doing? What is the United States doing? Remember I said earlier that these are foundling hospitals. Children are abandoned to the state. By having the name of the, the title of this new character put into the public realm, if mother does not claim that name, that title, what does it become? It's in a public domain now. Abandoned. This is now, this character, this title is abandoned into the public. Nobody's laid claim to it. So who picks it up? The state. The state picks up the title, the name, and does what with it? 
the state does something really ugly. The state starts, the state actually creates a title, an original title to it, but then starts making through what's an, an, an old British term called a copy hold. They start stamping out copies of this title. Copies. Everybody here has a copy of this title on a vehicle in their wallet. What is that vehicle called? Driver's license. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Most people think the vehicle's the thing with the wheels outside. <laughs> no, sorry folks. The vehicle is the license. It is, it is the piece, of, it is a little plastic form with the title on it and the likeness, the make and model of the vehicle or of the, uh, of the subject. What is it? It's a, it's a picture of you. It's a picture of you. It is Careful. a copy. It is a title. That's the vehicle. But anyway, I'm getting off track. The, the, the state is now creating copies of this title to do what? Make money with it. To make money with it. They create a birth certificate, which is a one share piece of stock in the United States, which does what? Well, it puts you into the U.S. citizenship realm. It's a commercial person. It's a one share stock, which makes it what? A minor issue. A minor what? Shareholder. But what else does it do? It straps you to their public policy. The U.S. citizenship is a corporate franchise that is then collectively naturalized into the United States. And this is only a copy of a title. The title. I mean, the U.S. citizenship is a title. It is just another copy that was created off of this situation. This is where all of you 14th Amendment folks out there that are, that are saying, that are talking about the 14th Amendment, <laughs> you're so far off base, I can't believe it. The 14th Amendment is just one copy. It is one title. It is one issue. It is one of hundreds, if not thousands, that have a title attached to it. Well, it ultimately looks like your name, but it is just a title. And it all is generated off of the birth certificate idea. <clears throat> but ultimately, let's remember I talked about the estate earlier today. Well, here's the thing. This title, here's little baby boy or baby girl. This title is the first piece of property Mom created this title and gave it to the son or daughter, to gave, gave it to this character. It is the first piece of property in the character's life, and it's called the testament, remember. So the property, the title, is the child's first piece of property within the child's estate. If you don't get this stuff, remember, who created this? Mom, or mother did. Mother did through her hand, which means she did it through her will. It, she didn't have to fill out anything and call it a will. It was her will. An act through her hand is an act of her will. you got to get this stuff, folks. All right, now let's go. That's the fictional realm. A lot of nasty stuff comes out of this. The IRS attaches to this title. You know what? What's amazing about this title? This certificate of title, it's a birth certificate here, but this certificate of title in that law merchant court system, they need, they need a document in front of them, a certificate of title. They need a piece of property of yours to do what? Create the trust, to construct a trust around. Without this property in that man with the, the, the black robe, without this piece of property in front of him, they have nothing. They're constructing their trusts around a certificate of title that was created by the hand of mother. The hand of mother. It was delivered by the hand of mother to the hospital administrator. It was abandoned by mother because she never reclaimed this character's title from the state, just like a DBA. Anybody that has a business out there, if you don't, I mean, when you announce the, the idea of the name of your company into the public, if nobody claims it, don't you get to use it? That's exactly what the United States is doing. Nobody claimed this title after it was announced. All right, baby boy. Nobody claimed it. So the state claimed it. The child, this, uh, this character was abandoned to the state and adopted by the state legally. The title is the property, ultimately, of the child. Here, let's go to the other side now. Oh, wait a minute. 
You know what, thank you, I'm going to use this real quick. I said that information, remember the parent conceives of, the, of an idea through information, that hospital information. This is uh, a little bit of the uh, history of the Illinois Attorney General. I want you to see how important the concept of information is. The powers generally understood to belong to the Attorney General at common law have been summarized as follows. First, to prosecute all actions necessary for the protection and defense of the property and revenues of the Crown. That's, that's, that's number one. Two, by information to bring certain classes of persons accused of crimes and misdemeanors to trial. Three, by, by sky or fascists to revoke and annul grants made by the Crown improperly or when forfeited by the grantee thereof. Six, or four, by information to recover money or other chattels or damages for wrongs committed on the land or other possessions of the Crown. Remember, this is the Crown Temple. This is the Crown Bank. This is the Bank of England. This is the Bank of England that's holding what? All the reins on the United States because of the bankruptcy of 1933. <clears throat> it goes on and on. But here's the, here's the last one I'm going to read. By information in chancery to enforce trusts and to prevent public nuisances and the abuse of trust powers. Everything in their system requires information. That birth certificate, this information that the hospital's asking for from mother, is nothing but information. Child's information, information by, for st statistical purposes only, mother's information, information for administrative purposes, father's information. Yes? On uh, number four there, what land are they talking about? Okay, I'm going to read this over again. Number four out of the history of, of the US, or Illinois Attorney General. Number four says, by information to recover money or other channels or damages for wrongs committed on the land. This is the land, folks. This is the will. This is, they're, they're only, whenever anybody talks about land in their system, they are not talking about land underfoot. They are talking about your physical body, which is your will. It's always that. And everything happens by our actions, by our consent. It's our actions that prove what our will is. <clears throat> There's so much in here. You really, you really do need... Oh, by the way, here's one. By proceedings in REM to recover property to which the Crown may be entitled... <laughs> Uh, by forfeiture for treason and property for which there is no le other legal owner, well, it was abandoned to the state, other legal owner, uh, such as Rex or treasure trove. Think about this. What's a treasure trove? It's an abandoned, what, vessel? Or, or it's, 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 it's potential found by somebody. Isn't this, isn't my energy, isn't my testament, the fruit of my labor, isn't the fruit of my labor, like the, finding the golden goose? I mean, if, I, if I'm super productive, think about Bill Gates. This man intellectually builds this multi, multi-billion dollar organization. But everything, because he has a birth certificate, all of his fruits are subject to their system. Because of this. Because of mom, or because of mother. None of us own anything. All of our property. Is it rests in the state. Just ask the Senate. They'll tell you. Thanks for this. Um, so let's go down to the living, breathing realm. Remember, these are both happening at the same time. They're happening at the same time. Mom and Dad, these aren't characters. These aren't, these aren't fictional persons. These are the, 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 the living, breathing, loving <clears throat> male and female. But Mom, the wife, as opposed to partner, and, and this is not a civil marriage, ultimately. This is, a law, this is a lawful couple. I mean, some people would say that it's a, what is it? I mean, when a couple cohabitate for X number of years, common law marriage or whatever. All right. When, the, when these two have intercourse, it would actually be considered sex between a male and a female. That is intercourse. For, uh, for, the, for the folks up here, for the, the persons up here, it's business. Down here, it's sex. So intercourse, here's what's interesting. When this woman conceives. She doesn't conceive 
through information, she conceives through fertilization. So the woman conceives through fertilization with a living, breathing man. And what does she conceive? A living, breathing being. Not an idea. She conceives of a being. How does she deliver the being? Thank you, Jordan Maxwell. She delivers the being, delivers the being through what? Her water. So the fiction delivers an idea through her hand, whereas the woman, the living, breathing, flesh and blood woman, delivers the being, the living, breathing being, through her water. And what is she, what is this being? What is she actually delivering? A child. Uh, look at this. Two separate entities. This is all running parallel. The character and the child. The child has a name. Curtis Richard Kallenbach. Curtis Richard Kallenbach is then what? Announced into the public. But mom, just like mother and dad, sadly, what did they fail to do? They fail to claim the child. The child is then considered what? Abandoned. Abandoned vessel? I don't know. Could, could the child become a treasure trove? <laughs> the child is abandoned to the state. The state picks up the child, basically legally adopts a child into the state's family. What is the state's family? Where does the state's family reside? Congress, ultimately. But, but see, the child is a ward of the courts. The child then, just like this other character, the child is stuck until 18 years old, having its life administrated over by the same court system. Because the child is abandoned, the child has a guardian appointed to the child, and that guardian is no, is no longer mom and dad. That guardian, is, it, it, hopefully everybody understands the idea of parents patrie. Parents Patrie is the new parent of this child. This child's family, and I mean family, lives, they all live together in, in one big happy family called U.S. Citizenship. Anyway, that child is, is subject. But anyway, the child has a name. Now it's interesting because the, the living, breathing child has a certificate of live birth. The title has a, a birth certificate. The birth certificate is not possible without the certificate of live birth. If there's not a live birth, there is none of there, none of this exists until the until the child is born and named. The title can't be be created for this birth certificate person. Finally, and and, and hopefully everybody watched the other part of this. The child has what? A will. What is the child's will? The land of its soul. So here's what's interesting about this first this this birth certificate situation. This whole situation makes sense only if you can grasp that the certificate of live birth and the birth certificate come from two different places. It comes from what? The, birth, the, the, the will and testament. What is the will of the child? It's land. What is the testament of the child? It's property. What is the property? The title. So you have the physical child and his character, the physical child and his title. You have the land and the property, which is these two situations. The land is the will, and this title is the property or testament. Now, the child, the, the, the newborn, has a complete estate. What is a complete estate? His physical body and his title, which mother created through her hand. So that's what's happening here. Until people understand this, uh, there, there really is, it, it happens for everybody and it has happened for all of us. Let me, let me see if there's anything else here that I, that I should... Uh... You guys, anybody have any... Um... Oh, by the way, this estate is the same estate that I showed that is administrated over by the law merchant court system. Why? Because the child is 18 years, up to 18 years old, is considered an infant, and is legally disabled by the court system, the private court, the Department of Justice. So the child, is her, his or her estate, both property and land, is administrated over by a guardian until 18. After 18, what happens? The child's considered a legal idiot because why? Well, here's what happens. Does, here's, a, here's a question for everybody out there. <clears throat> Did, when, what is the age of majority in uh, Illinois? Hmm. That's a trick question, obviously, because <laughs> the age of majority is irrelevant in any of the so-called states. Why? Because the age of majority is not chronological. The age of majority is when this 
child or man is willing to take full liability, thank you Ron, full liability or responsibility for his or her life. The moment the child is willing to take over responsibility 100% of over his estate, that is both the land and property or the will and testament, the child has to be 100% willing to assume responsibility. Does that mean you can have insurance? Nope. Does that mean you can let the state take care of you? Nope. Does that mean it's going to be very difficult <laughs> to be free of this situation? Yep. Why? Because of the deception, the lies. Everybody in Congress is working against you. Everybody in the court system is working against you. Every cop out there is working against you. Every single person involved in their system is working against you. What are the odds? How many Americans would be willing to give up anything to become free? How many Americans would be willing, willing to walk away from this garbage, from their stuff, their, their commercial aspect, their commercial person, their commercial character, to be free? Come on, patriots! How many of you would be willing to give up your house, your car, all of your stuff to be free? I don't believe any of you. I, I don't believe any of you patriots would be willing to do that. You know what you want to do? You want to believe in somebody like a Ron Paul. You want to believe that you don't, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to have to give up anything. You want your cake and eat it too. You can't do that. You want to be free. You've got to take full responsibility and only your will is an expression of that what? That's the only, I mean, to do it is, a, is an expression of who you are. You have to do it in order for it to be your will. Every day you show up in their court, it's an act of your will. Every day you, you deal with their, their police, it's an act of your will. Every day that you watch the television and, 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 and watch the mayhem that the United States military, the, the world's murder machine, out there killing for profit, the fact that you do nothing is your will. What can we do about that? Hey, we need to walk away from it. Again, it's right back to withdrawing consent. Everything comes back to consent because if you don't really want to do it, you won't do it. And if you do do it, it's an act of your will. Absolutely. So, again, I hope everybody can see this. Uh, is, is, is this viewable at least? Okay. Um, all you guys that, that don't understand how the title or the character or the idea or the parent, you know what? Watch this a thousand times if you have to. This situation is fiction. This situation is real world. It's living, breathing realm. Two entities are born. Two entities are created in the hospital or born in the hospital. One is born through the water, which is a living, breathing child. One is born through the hand, but it's still the will of the mother, or the mother, the hand, and that's a new character which turns into a title. And that title is what they, they require in their Department of Justice court system. It's as simple as that. If you take away this property from their, their system, if you, if you were actually to obliterate this side of the equation, if you could, what would you be doing? You'd be freeing yourself from their fictional realm, from their fictional house, from their private business. On that, um, I got one more to do and, and then uh, we'll be done for the, for the day.